Euclidean space. This pointed directly at the revelation that the Riemann geometric terms on the left-hand side of the famous JMN equals TMN GNN equals TNN equation were zero. If JMN equals zero If GNN equals zero, then the curved space had nothing to do with real cosmic physics. Euclidean space. Euclidean space. It raises the question, is space-time curvature valid? At this point, the elementary question that should have been asked long ago by a scientist and non-scientists alike is any reasonable definition of space. How can one curve it? If you have trouble visualizing curved space, try curved time. Curved space-time appears to be, and always to have been, as Tom Phipps casually remarked, an oxymoron. There are two attractive features of this suggestion. In Olympia meeting 1983, there was a calculations that the mass of the Earth had to be increasing. The problem was, however, that the mass had to be increasing too fast. To quote J.K. Davidson, the current expansion rate is very rapid and gives rise to questions like, how is the extra mass being created? It seems to be occurring in the core, as there is no evidence at the surface. Will the Earth ultimately explode and form another asteroid belt, or will it become a Jupiter and then a Sun? At that meeting, I reminded the geophysicist section of the fact that the extragalactic quantization evidence showed as matter evolved, it must jump rapidly from one quantized particle mass value to the next highest. The obvious implication that this would be a natural explanation for the varying rate of the expansion of the Earth. The second attractive value of the variable mass theory is that the research of Tom Van Flander in 1993 indicates that planets explode. It has always been clear that where a giant planet should exist between Mars and Jupiter, there is instead a belt of, of rock fragments called asteroids. But Van Flander's careful work on the problem of Mars, which should in all continuity be larger rather than much smaller than the Earth, shows that it has suffered a fragmentation explosion, leaving visible effects on one face. So there is evidence that this happens in the solar system. In fact, there is visible evidence that it happens in galaxies as well. The current state. The most intriguing problem to me now is to combine the features of the variable mass solution with the features of the pushing gravity models. The Machian communication of the variable mass solution with matter at increasing distances offers a solution for the quantization values as reflecting discrete drops in mean density. As we proceed outward, in a hierarchical universe, but the communication is electromagnetic at the velocity of light. It is possible to transfer the periodically increasing mass with photons that resonate with the frequency of the electrons and protons in the matter under consideration. Or does this resonance frequency of the electron, for example, Milo Wolf, 1995, just make it possible for much smaller, much faster than light gravitons to deposit new mass in older material. As important as the details are, the observations overall seem now generally require new matter to continually materialize at various points in the universe. Balance, if necessary, could be obtained from feedback mechanisms between the intergalactic ether and long wavelength radiation from present matter, I presume. The greatest part of the progress independent researchers have made in the past decades, in my opinion, is to break free from the observationally disproved dogma of curved spacetime, dark matter, big bang, no primary reference frame, and no faster than light information.
Altenar. Well, let's see who we got in the house. We got uh, Sherman, Sherman Edder <laughs> Osborne, <Sherman laughs> the Zinkster. Sherman what? Sherman Edder Osborne. <laughs> it's weird. Uh, T Nix 88, Dakin. What's up, Dakin? Ancient history criticism. What's up, buddy? And uh, we got the Zinkster in. And Grouch is out there. All right, you're looking pretty. All of us. Uh, and we got Enlightened Elevated Tree Feller. <laughs> There's the name. Uh, I was thinking of naming myself Stalking Horse. I kind of like that. Um, Synchronous, just I'm challenged. Okay, you know what? I can do this. I forgot. I can just highlight you and then hit the little uh, Pac Man. Synchronous. Synchronous, right. Enlightened elevated tree filler. That's pretty good. Dak and Black Blade. And uh, looks like that might be uh, Hastling. Hasling Flim is there. Esoteric Gold, Sean Hammer. Is he a Sean? Uh, hmm, Michael White, NDH. Just want to pay my respects to you all for coming. Uh, Frederick Pope. St. Polica! After this half hour of R Ramon, Andy, and I, then we'll do a little chatting, and uh, I'm going to get you guys involved in some stuff. All right. This is the video we made with Ramon, part two. I'll be in the chat room in a few, guys. i got to get this set up first. Thank you for coming, everybody. I hope you're enjoying the show. I'll shut up now. Probably it could have flipped then and may not have, but it definitely mm -hmm. flipped from Jupiter to the to the sun. Yeah. So I know only of the one, but it there's a good chance it could have happened at another time. It just depends on the polarity. It's just a matter of polarity. Velikovsky says that the evidence would be right in the lava rocks, but the geologists don't even look for that. It's just ridiculous, well, man. So I do have one piece of evidence. You hold on, let me share my screen again. Um, okay, I'm now, recording again. Yeah, Ramon, why are you doing that? There was also uh, Dr. Carmen, what was her name, Greg? Oh, it's Carmen Dr. Boulder. It wasn't that, was that her yeah, name, Carmen? Yes, she wrote yeah, the Pyramid that. Code. Yeah, and she's, yeah, and she was on Dark Journalist. I felt she yeah. wasn't actually, like, I felt he wasn't 100% comfortable because no. she wasn't in the line he likes, you know, he always That's likes right. that. That yes. hypothetical about these aliens and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And yeah. why we're not being recorded. Mate, anything that's alien that's got a hole in it that's that's not like metal, humans will will, will overpower it because there's one thing we do to everything we touch. What would that be, Greg? Fuck it up. That's it. We gotta fuck it somehow. <laughs> so I'm not stressed about the poor old alien as long as it's not made out of out of out of some titanium type product. Yeah. As long as it flexes, if it flexes, we'll fuck it. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, but yeah, that was interesting, Ramon. That one too with with um her, you know um. Some of the things she was discussing. What were you going to show us, Ramon? Well, I, I had it loaded and Skype screwed up, so hold on, I'm reloading it here. Mm. Yeah, all right, we'll give you we'll give you a couple of minutes, Ramon. Right, it won't take it. won't take that long. Are you getting tired, darling? Oops, I got to turn the mic off. Nearly the end of the day, full Greg. Yeah, there we go. So this is uh, two different electrogeology sites in uh, Ducky. Uh -huh. uh, this is in the well, the, lay, the ley line. So this is one site with the angular and then flat and angular. 
this is the the one I wanted to, to show. This is from Dogfoot Hollow. Of course, we were there looking to verify uh, um, whether or not whether were there were some specific Indian head objects that looked like kind of uh, Toltec or something. Um, and they washed down to the below. This is a this is several mm -hmm. hundred feet up. Anyways, you can see that the layer wants to angle up, then it goes flat, and then it wants to angle up, and then it goes flat, and then it wants to angle up, and then it goes flat. And every time it wants to angle up, it wants to angle up at the same basic angle. And then it wants to go flat. And this does not make sense from a uniformitarian perspective, period. Mm. There you go. Yeah, you're right. You're right. And People, people want to verify these, they can go to these coordinates and then they can see them themselves. Good, that's called good science. <laughs> whereas, whereas uh, you know, you never know what you're going to get from the other side. Here's the, here's the actual figureheads that were yep, that's uh, provided pretty good. to me as evidence. Uh, we did not find anything like this, but I will point out that the one on the right is a manatee. Mm, okay. Yeah, so what's it doing in Kentucky? No doubt. Right. Now, bear in mind, though, that Florida was a lot larger of a thing. Uh, like and when I say credit, point. Lee Pennington, Lee Pennington took the photos, but the, the patient that gave them to me is not. What are, what are Roman coins doing up and down the Ohio River? Well, that's, that's, a, that's a lot easier to explain than uh, why this Olmec piece or Mayan head or whatever it is is up here in Kentucky. Yeah. Roman sword was found on Oak Island. Mm-hmm. Yeah, think like that. Yeah. Anyway, so that, that, that's 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 your if, if there's any evidence for suddenly uh tilting and all that stuff, uh but then again, why would it be laid for so long? I think this is more likely probably some electrical behavior, but we don't know. Yeah. Don't have the data. We just know it can't be uniformitarian. Period. Right. Right, but now let me it, ask you, you this. Can, let me there's ask no, this. there's no mechanism for the pressure to bend this up and then make it flat, and then the pressure again, and then make it flat. That any any geologist try to tell me that, I'm going to tell him he's full of shit right to his face. Let me ask you this: Me and Andy were having this conversation the other day. He seems to think that it could have been the sun that reversed instead of the Earth, and I th I would think that a planet would be. A lot more succumb to them kind of powers than a well, star would. What do you think? Re regardless, uh, the Jovian octagons show that we, uh, the northern hemisphere of Earth, had a direct line of sight to the northern pole, the North Pole of Jupiter. We have the mathematics on that. Yes. Yeah. yeah, I yes. know that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we did this. We did this. Uh, we did we this. Did. Work, so. Our first show. This was our first show? You're saying that yes. this... Yes, it was our first oh, well, show. That's, that's Earth good foundation because... And megafauna extinction. Oh, well, it's no, that's, a, that's, an that's, that's a different video. paper. That's a different paper. Megafauna oh. extinction. Yeah, okay. that's, a big, that's a bigger paper. This is a very specific... This image is in it. That's probably well, why you're thinking. we didn't do this. Thanks, Grandma. I just, feel, I just feel that a planet... Say yes, like we it. did that one. If you stop it to reverse it, at that point where it stopped, there's a good chance it's just going to fall to bits. Uh, yeah. yeah, maybe and, so. And, I mean, probably. I, my theory is more on either it turns inside out within, so the out, the outer surface has got to stay, you know, it'll be rough. With the Milinkovic cycles and the sun and, and, and the sun changing, changing slightly, well, that would then give through all that turning and and that that would basically, through that process, you would actually sort of tip around and come back out as like a figure eight. You get what I mean? Like, like, like when I hear them say, oh, the magnetic field's flipped and that flipped us over and that, I think, oh, I don't really if, – if you had that happen to me – Anything that's not water based would be gone. Mm, yeah, so maybe. I, I don't know. I don't. I don't see it that way. To me, anything that's not water based life would 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 possibly be flooded out to the point whereby. I don't. I don't. It, I don't think it's it, simple it would be because 
I, I think that you're going to, of course, have some large waves and some winds, but mostly all of it will try and kind of travel together. Um, I mean, it's it's recorded in the Bible and it's recorded by the Chinese and the Mayans, so I, I just don't see that there's any evidence for that. But I do think that probably the crust would have, um, being basically a little loose, would have there would have been a delay in the mantle and the crust reaching equilibrium. And so probably you're going to get volcanic activity and, uh, and earthquakes, yep. excessive earthquakes, in which right. case, you know, you're going to have a lot of co uh, collapsed uh, cities because if our cities that are built like slums today collapse and kill hundreds of thousands of people in Haiti, well, what were they doing back then? I mean, it wouldn't be a pretty sight. No, no, I well, understand. I don't know if we're on the same subject, but you so know, that's basically the, the, their the thought that that that's basically there where you would possibly get one reset of higher civilizations, and of course, we also know you can get resets of civilizations through civilizations destroying themselves from within. Yeah, there's about six methods that I could describe of potential PIM. Uh, def uh, PIM descriptions of crustal collapse theory. So one more sometime, proof. One so more maybe proof. after I do, maybe after I do the plasma electromagnetic sky two paper, maybe we do, maybe we do the crustal collapse again. We did, we did cover it before. Well, with the plasma and that, that would possibly join together too. See, the but Earth at one time was an egg shape. shape. It was flipped yeah, upside down, and it, if Saturn was in the northern hemisphere, it was pulling on the Earth, and the south pole is 10,000 feet high. The bottom, the north pole, would have been 10,000 feet deep, which is exactly what it is. You're missing so, the most scary part of this, and I'm going to, while you're finishing your point, I'm going to pull up go something. Ahead. Go ahead. Gonna, uh, no, go, you, you, you finish your thought because this is going to be a scary, scary thing that is, is going to... Is well, that just shows me that that is an indicator that if that was the case, then the South Pole had to be in the North. Well, yeah, I mean, but I've already shown that that's definitely true. I yes. mean, the statistics, and I just showed briefly those statistics, we're talking a 1 in 10 to the 45 chance of coincidence Right. of the arrangement of those octagons with the northern pole of Jupiter. That's right. One in 10 to the 45. That's zero. There's a zero percent chance of coincidence. So they could see, they could definitely see it. So the thing I want to show you here, and we're going to, so we're going to go to the bit.ly. We're going to follow on the, on the addendum to the megafauna extension, mm -hmm. uh, the bit.ly link. And it, uh, uh, of course it asks you if you really wanted to do that. And then it takes you to the uh, the Google Doc itself. Yeah. And we we did this paper, but I want to re-drive home a point. Go ahead. Uh, go ahead. Yeah, take your time. Good. Well, go ahead while it's while it's loading the table of contents. Make any any point you were or make a question. Oh, I I already shared my thoughts. Oh, okay. All right. So where is it here? See here, we'll go. There we go. All right. When when proto Saturn and Jupiter are going around each other, uh, yeah. they're going to occasionally be tighter and occasionally be further. Mm -hmm. When they are tighter, uh, there's going to be more electric electricity generated. Remember, we're orbiting way outside of here, mm -hmm. like the two. But we're still we're, we're still feeling the the effect of these two. Oh, yeah. And it's going to be sort of like husband and wife, sometimes hot together, sometimes cold together, and we're the children. So that's going to cause us to really wonder what is what is going on now. Are we the grace here? No, we're neither. We're neither one of those spheres. We oh. are a little dot following the, those two uh, as they go around each other. These are gas giants. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, we are out here where my where my cursor is. Okay, going way outside. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then, and then, when you talk about uh, uh, this one, when now there's Neptune, and this is this three-body solution has not been solved, we are potentially being handed off like hot potatoes between the three brothers. Yeah. 
Can and I then even even when even when you have and every time this whip happens, we are going to be trailing and then accelerating, which is your source of your hot and cold motifs, your ice giants and fire giants of history. These mm-hmm. in these cycle and the, what are called the high carp floods in the Inca mm-hmm. and the World Order. Multiple floods, multiple deluges, according to the Egyptian priest. I get it. Yep, and, that's then, nice. and remember, we're just a little sphere around these three spheres going. Yeah, yeah. Past each other. Getting passed around. Every time, every time they rub rub each other, that's generating electricity. Every time we get whipped around, that is affecting our experience climate wise on this planet. Earth was a pass around patty. Yes, and then even even then, when it became a three body problem, and it was or it became a Lagrange solution, and we had this temporary age of the gods, the golden age of the gods, and we mm-hmm. could see um, our Lord at the center, and you know everything seemed right with the world. Our orbit would have still been chaos. It wouldn't have made any any fucking sense. We would have been coming and going, and and uh, looking and running into hailstones from the destructions, and it would appear to us to be as if. These gods were coming and going and having uh, sexual relations with each other right, and, right. and making war on each other. It would have just been a matter of perspective. Yep. Hibbity jibbity. I mean, uh, helter skelter. There's nothing uh, regular about it. I dig it. It would not have been a pleasant situation. Nope. No, I like that, Ron. That's pretty good. Very, very important to realize that we were being accelerated around these bodies. Mm-hmm. It was not the pretty picture. That uh, the Thunderbolts pe- uh, people have uh, proposed uh, about the golden era of the gods. The golden era of the gods was a short solution between hell and, and where we are now. Yep, the paradise went sent into uh, Jimmy Hell. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was probably pretty good when it was just one star and it was all the, the bodies were around it. But then once it split and we started like all circulating all over the place, it would have been awful. Just an absolute yeah. fucking nightmare for about 9,000 years. By the time Venus went by, you know the Gorgon skies. It was that was like the one of the last acts. Yeah, it, it was really it was it was winding down, but it was yeah. still hell. It was still mm-hmm. awful. No doubt. That's why the Old Testament is about nothing but catastrophes. Yeah, and then people were uh, ripping out hearts and eating babies. Yeah, yeah, in South yeah. America. Yeah, it was absolutely unbelievable. Yeah, <laughs> sorry, and uh, we haven't gotten over it really. No, we're still psychotic. Oh, uh, yeah, very much so. Very much so. It's just unexplainable. Unexplainable to me, Ramon. Well, that's only because you have a high IQ and high TIQ compared to people of the past. If you if you had grown up in that society, it had been completely formal. If, yeah. you, saw, uh, if you saw a Viking man, uh, you know, have a duel with your father... And he killed your father, but your father had called the man gay. Mm-hmm. You would have totally understood and empathized. You'd still go out and try to get revenge, mm-hmm. uh, but you would totally understand exactly why this man killed your father because he violated a code. He called your father gay. How dare! How dare that! You know, they, they then they get into a fight, and one kills the other, and he's perfectly legal. Okay, and then you you getting revenge for your father? That's also perfectly legal. This is, but it's just the way it was. Yep. Yep. For sure. Uh, low IQ people, you know, uh, of the of the history, you know, and uh, when you talk about low TIQ, um, it's going to be a real challenge because this AI is is poised to change everything, mm-hmm. and the, it's coming and it's coming really fast, really fast. People have no clue what's coming. No, nah, I hope not, man. I hope that's not true. And and in and in and in the brand in the Brandonana Republic stand. Uh, you know, you have a, a kleptocrat building a wall around his uh, little White House palace to keep out the 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 the, the people, uh, but claiming that walls don't work, and so why would we need one at the southern border? I mean, it's just the backwardsness is there. It's just the way that things. Who are you referring to? 
Oh yeah, it was uh, it shown that out of nowhere in the last uh, couple of days they started reporting that out of nowhere uh, uh, the Biden White House started building a wall around it. What? Yeah, They're building a wall around the Biden White House. Yeah. Come on, for what? Three concrete barriers and such. Who why? knows? They didn't announce why. They didn't explain to the you media know, I why. Hear, so. I hear they want a civil war, like, because they want to they want solve war. themselves of all their obligations. To well, not just security. that, but they want to be able to pin it on us patriots and then say that it's patriotism and all this stuff is the evil and all that. But, of course, it's really just consolidating their power. Over. I heard they shipped all of our money out of the country years ago. Uh, that's probably true. They probably sold all the gold to Russia and China because the they they Russia and China have been buying gold like crazy. And now you know dissension isn't even allowed. You know we're supposed to be about free speech and rights, and you know now if you just disagree with something, they shut you down. Well, um, yeah, I mean uh, they're welcome to try and shut me down. I don't know if you heard episode twenty two of the Pulse, but uh, my no. I raised. I, I raised some pulses, I can tell you that, because I, I said I don't think they have the nuts to come for me. Oh, jeez, Ramon. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know, but you know what? I'd rather be... I know, I, dude, I'm right there with you. I just, man, I just pray for my kids' future, you know? Well, I pray for my kids' future, too. That's why I'd rather I'd rather be the one that have to deal with it than my children, because I love my children. But I, I believe that they will be the ones that do have to deal with it, whether or not I get the chance. Yeah, keep doing our part to add to the collective for the good. By the way, if you release the this video, try to yeah. yeah well, I'm off the cuff now. Um, yeah. Uh, Whoopsie. Between you no, and me, this was a great uh, twenty minutes. I'm definitely going to show it, but I'll edit it. Yeah. yeah okay. All right. <laughs> Shit. Yeah. Yeah, well, we I said could... it a few times. It's just passion, man. It just gets in the way. It's definitely passion, but it's it's a lot more than that. I care about uh, all the uh, the eighty five percent of us that aren't insane. Right. Uh, I wish those other people well, and I hope they get better. I found, hope they find healing. But uh, so long as they're useful idiots in support of a, a, uh, a psychopathic deep state and new world order that wants to ruin everyone's lives. Most make people it, just do what family. television tells them. There was a video I saw, this Australian woman. I mean, you know, she tested positive and just kind of like jokingly or whatever. Whatever. She had done something that you know, upset the local uh, tyrannics. Uh, so they sent her to a concentration camp for like three weeks or something. I mean, they literally put her in a yeah, concentration no, camp and I then know. they told her about something or whatever. So it wasn't because she was more transmissible. It was to punish her. Right. Well, the fact that she went and then she stayed is the part that amazes me. You know, but I understand she's a woman. What's she going to do? Me, I would, uh, I, would go, I would go born identity on these people. Did you hear about the demonstration they had in um, Minnesota, well, some city, I think maybe Minneapolis, but uh, they had a anti-police brutality protest, it's peaceful. While they were protesting, the cops went and slashed all their tires and busted out all their windows. I'm not really that surprised. Um, up there, they also uh, decided to enforce martial law by driving up the street and firing paintball pellets with automatic paintball uh, machine guns at people who were on their own porches. Freaking now, let me tell you something. shaking people down now. It's we had a, a whole World War II to stop yeah. this shit. Yeah. So people need to wake up, and they need to uh, to nut up. The men need to get some testosterone going, and uh, the women need to tell their, tell their men, hey, you need to nut up, and we need to stop this shit because it's, it's becoming a dangerous level. Of, uh, you know, it's going beyond experiment and bullshit. Um, when they start canceling and censoring sitting Congress people who are the elected government, this is not this is not a joke anymore. Um, so I don't know when people are going to wake up. I will tell you that I'm that to their neighbors because we're not the enemy. China is is uh, gearing up to be the enemy, and Russia. So you know it's 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 just sad to see because a liberal society should not have this man. issue. We can't lose our meds. It's been it's because of agenda and money and power of certain groups of people that this is happening. Mm. But you know, a lot of us if there's five million of us saying it, what are they gonna do? They don't have prisons for all that. You know, they just don't. These people are pathetic. They they came after Millennial Millie because she was putting out the Shadowgate. 
and they found something to, to trump up some charges. But she got out of that, too, and she's right back to the game. These people don't have right? They only have it when they're, you know, able to, you know, pick on poor people or druggies or something like that. Women, in, women breaking their jaws and that. And it comes yeah. back to it. Maybe it's time we sat down and let, let females be feminine again and males respect that. And again, let us be males again. They wouldn't be bad. All get muddy and bogged up. And now, you know, so many don't, don't and, and, and it seems to be nothing. There's no recompense for someone doing something for a male, bulky male, going up and getting some young, or relatively small female and belting the crap out of them. You know, there's, there's, there's nothing there to stop them. Nope. And it's going to get worse because what these ladies haven't realized is the law of polarity still applies. It doesn't really stop just because you yes. acquired feminine power. And if you use that feminine power in a way that's irresponsible and create misery in single families and stuff, these young males are going to get angry and they're going to start gang raping and destroying and they're going to say... And what the, these males are learning is that they can get on Tinder and get cheap vaginas uh, that, that they don't have to have any responsibility for. That's not good. That's a really bad thing. Families work for a reason. But these, these young males, they don't have any reason to support any of these females. They can go on there and, and, and drum up any number of it that they, that they feel like. And then they don't even have to produce children. Because there's so many of these females with uh, with father with fatherless children, they can easily join any family. Uh, but you've got to think too, with what you're talking, it's not a single generation. You now have have that. You now have the, the third generation developing on yes. that system, which means it's becoming cemented. So it's not a yeah, one-off it's anymore. Normalize. Yes, yes, and that's where the big issue is coming, and. You know, everyone sees, oh, well, we give them some money, they'll be right. And again, that's yep. teaching them that they don't have to be resilient either. You know, just plug along and you'll be right. School doesn't Would tell that be a people fair yeah, I, I agree. how to think. It tells them what yeah, to think. So, no, yeah, no, no, there was some interest and probably quite good that talk, I reckon, Greg, that part two. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, so, yeah, so, so when it always comes back to the old philosophy of the morals and the ethics, and you shouldn't need big, big police forces, because when you need big police forces, that means your morals and your ethics are breaking down. Exactly. It's a sign of, uh, of a, a fundamental problem in the, in the social fabric. Yes. Yeah, it's not mm -hmm. a sign. It's not a. It's not a healthy sign at all to have that kind of uh, that kind of of uh, brutality. Of need, of need for power and controlling of eight individuals. Mm -hmm. You have that. You've already. You've already lost the game. It's just when you. When have you lost it? Have you lost it in ten years or a hundred years? Doesn't really matter. And uh, yeah. we've we've managed to lose it in forty to fifty years. Uh, and, and, and it is partially by design, like I say, but the people, they fed into it all too easily. They made it too easy for these power hungry psychopaths to divide and conquer them all because they, they got a little bit wealthy. They got a little bit of extra stuff and they gave up on God and they gave up on well, country and they gave up on family. They got a feeling of wealth. Because yes, at the end of the day, everything, everything you and I have technically got that's material can be taken off us with the stroke of a pen. Yes. Right? So it, it, it's really only, at the moment, <sighs> they're allowing us to utilise. Uh, yeah. Still there, Greg? Yeah, oh yeah. Oh yeah. So... I'm just having a walk on a lovely day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, are we done? Is that it? Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm done. I'm. I'm. I'm burned. <laughs> All right, then. I'm off. Goodbye. Uh
probably it could have flipped then and may not have but it definitely mm-hmm. flipped from jupiter to the to the it's it's like what happened there and, and nobody was talking about that nobody was going hey what about it's, the people it's that it's heartbreaking to lose a house it's heartbreaking right well it's hard for, yeah it is but if it's like if it's like a rental property that you use no I yeah know. you rent yeah. it out because you wanted to have a you know so you get a better house yourself and then you know, right. you know, then you would depend on the people that rent your house to well, pay you your know, mortgage. Uh, amazon is putting walmart out of business i remember when walmart came in and put mom and pop out of business you know and now amazon is uh the website kills the walmart star you know Oh, I, I, yeah. Um, we had a Walmart. Yep. We had a Walmart right down the street from my house. That it was, you know, it was a big one, mm-hmm. and it was, it was fine. It was thriving. There's no problem there. Mm-hmm. And just one day, they had the thing up where you know it's closed. Yeah. yeah. Like what the hell? <laughs> you know, it's sat there that way for a long time. Now they're building something. Now they're building something in place of it. Now I don't know what it is. They're not telling anybody. Here's what burns me up about companies that go bankrupt like Kmart was a prime example they were SS Kreskies they used to be called dime stores you know back in the day and then they formed Kmart out of SS Kresge and it was like the first bargain blue light special department right. store right and kmart always had a good deal they had brand names you know at first right. like people i wouldn't get caught dead there but then they started selling brand names and everybody started going well they went bankrupt in the 90s and all of their stockholders who were people like us just working stiffs trying to have a little nest egg lost everything and just a, they reformed a couple of weeks later and went right back into business and started selling stock again. That's bullshit. And people were, I wouldn't be, would you buy into that stock? No, no. I would not. But see, the stock market to me is like a rich man's game to bilk working class and, people. Yeah, they, just, they do side trading, they know what's going to happen. Oh, sure they do. Better it's, believe it. Yeah, they do. That's why it's like things aren't, there's no gambling like, a, you know, sports. People actually think that the, pe- the get people playing those games, mm-hmm. uh, you know, the, whatever the game they're playing, it, it, it's not already pre, you know, figured before. Oh my like, maybe God, is there anything more that. stupider than online gambling? Oh, why don't we just throw the money at them? Just go ahead and <laughs> tell me where to send it. That's I know. so freaking insane. You're not going to win. Hello. But, it, but it's more like, what? Uh, I have a friend who is, you know, like addicted to, you know, slot machine thing. Mm-hmm. And he's got these, you know, he's got like pretend, they're pretend they're like toy slot machines, but they're, you know, so a couple of them are really big. They're, yeah. But they can't be, you know, because we live in California and mm-hmm. there's laws, you can't have a real slot machine in your house, but they have toy ones that look oh, like yeah. real ones, kind of. Like banks, yeah. And, cool. and he, you know, and he's got these all around his house and he sits in front of them. I'm like, what are you going to win? <laughs> you know, what are you gonna, <laughs> I mean, maybe you get the jackpot, the bells ring, but what happens? Nothing yeah. happens. What are, what are you doing this for? Well, he's just and, like and that, pulling that one arm bended. Well, I don't know what it is, but no, but they're actually, there's not even one arm anymore. You know, you just you hit the thing and oh, hit the I buttons. Oh, I know, yeah, and, yeah. And that, so that, that whole idea is that's going up, but it's like, what are you doing this for? Right. And when yeah. he gets bored with it, then he goes to the casino mm. and he, you know, he'll, you know, I don't know, he's this person, one of these people, you know, they, he's like a professional. Mm-hmm. So they, they know that they have to spend a lot of money to get money back, right? Right. Yeah. And, um, yeah, and, uh. But it becomes this problem. I don't know, but I mean, I don't. I've never been lucky in that kind of stuff. Or what, no, I don't know. I've, no. Even the odds are. I've never. I never win. I know. I've. And um, yeah. So I'm lucky. I'm glad. I'm glad that I don't. Because if I did, I, I might have the problem with it mm-hmm. too. I would think. You know. But. Oh yeah, man. I I got into the ponies for a little while because no, uh, I, I was too. dating a girl. I, Her brother was into it. And he'd like go. I gotta go catch the last three races of Hazel. So I just yep. tag along, you know. Yeah. And I it was kind of fun. I won a trifecta. 
You know, Are you kidding? I, no. My first time, I want to try It was like 150 bucks, and boy, I got the bug. I probably lost that 150 bucks 20 times after that, before I got wives. Okay, you, I mean, running a trifecta, that's not... I know. <laughs> it was a, like a... Two dollar trifecta. I made 150. That was like a big payday for me. <laughs> that would be a big deal. See, I mean, yeah. I I had a friend who was into into horse racing and whatever. We have it like a local thing, uh -huh. and um and they horse race, but they do that where the the there's a guy sitting on that in that thing with with the two wheels. Um, I forget what they call it, but it's you know they're not on the horse's back, but they're Charlie's, being Charlie. I, I don't know. Trotters. I, the trotters? trotters trotters or yeah. the pacers um, they're, they're, they're mm -hmm. going really fast but they have you know they're but they're like sitting in those yeah, cart things or whatever they're kind of walking fancy like sassy frassy no no no, no the horses take her up but they but the horse the guys the jockeys aren't on the horse's backs no they're on they're, little carts like little rickshaws yeah like the rickshaw thing yeah yeah and um and they're going really fast they don't run they trot yeah, and um, I have I had a girlfriend who you know she had they actually had a, she had a horse that was you know she was into it. I mean she was really into it. I didn't know how much and so just like, hey, you want to go with me to the, you know, to the horse track or whatever. And I'm like, oh, well, okay, I guess so because I, I love to, to watch the animals. And um, and I she taught me all this stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, but the one that the coolest thing ever that one of the feeling, things that happened to me with her was. She knew the, um, because she knew everybody in the track, all these people, she'd been doing this forever. And she's like, hey, you want to ride with the, we're, I'm gonna, we're gonna take a ride. Because the, the very first race they have, they have a car that goes out and it's like a, you know, convertible. And I don't know why they do it, but a car goes out, takes off first, and then the horses take off my behind them. What's it for? Yeah, that, that's called mobile barriers. So the idea okay. is the car goes up to a certain pace and the horses are already moving and then at the point the car takes off and then the horses actually start racing. Oh, is that what it is? Well, all that's I know what, is that's cool. all I know is I'm you sitting get a here race. and um, you know I'm in the I'm in the convertible. We're sitting in the convertible and um, and we we left and then I hear this thunder. And I'm like so I turn around and I'm looking and here's these horses just full on just coming at us, you know? And I'm like, this is incredible. And um, and I was, I could stand up if I wanted to. And so I was standing up because the horses, they were all around us. And they were they were all around us. But I mean, I'd never been in such a, I can't explain it, the noise, the horses, the, it was the most incredible thing. I just remember going, that was one of the most incredible experiences I've ever, I've ever had. Cause they were things like, they were horses run really fast. I mean, you know, when you're in it, they're going pretty fast. But, um, but uh, of course, I never won with her either. Um, and I tried to learn. I tried to learn how to do that. You know, I would do all the, you get that sheet and you look at the horses and the, what they, you know, if they've been hurt or what they're, I uh, never, never won. And she, hey, and my girlfriend, really she That's really big folly in the Nordic country. That sort of like horse race really big in Nordic countries and basically from memory to be competitive a horse has to be able to run around um, 190s um, yeah under two minutes a mile so yeah, so how many miles how many miles per hour would that be uh, 55 uh, hang on that'd be about 35 but, yeah, I, I remember at one point my girlfriend telling me, I go, well, and we, I, that's I, an I, average, so that means it points, because we, we were going for an hour. 40, so that means it points, they'd be going quicker. Yep, that'd be right. Yep. So I remember she said, she was, well, we're going to go, we're going to, we're going to, you know, drive, uh, we're going to be going 40 miles per hour, and something, the horses are going to come up or whatever. I'm like, what? I couldn't really hear what she was saying, and. Uh, I didn't understand it. I still don't understand what happened, but it was a really fun and cool thing that happened. But um, but I felt so sorry for the horses because I, I learned a lot about actually what they do with the horses. And um, and if I, if I, I couldn't go anymore because the horses are just, you know, they're just used for whatever and they're, they're injured, they're sick and they still, you know, they still, oh, it's just awful. Who's and I that? think that's what I rigged. 
you know, hey, uh, the you got, do you do you have cows, Polly? Cows? Yeah. You mean like? Yeah. Sure. You do? Me? Yeah. Do I have cattle? Yeah. No, I don't live on a farm. Oh, I thought you did, because uh, Andy has cattle. Yeah. Oh, I mean, uh, I my family. I come from a family of pig farmers, farmers. And, and dairy farmers, mm -hmm. and so I mean, I, I yeah, I've been on a farm. Have many you ever times. had milk straight from the cow? Yes. Yeah, I have. It's <laughs> disgusting. No, it's not. <laughs> yes, it is. It depends upon what the cow has been eating, how the milk's going to taste. <sighs> it's yellow. And, uh, it's that's awful. what I call it, Polly. Polly, that's what I call it. It depends on the pasture. Yeah, it does. Depends um, on the pasture. Yeah, I suppose that is that would be that. That makes sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the, and whatever they whatever they put in, I'm going to make it change to everybody. I, I remember um, every time we'd go on vacation for summertime, we'd go and we would visit all these all the different family members. They all in Minnesota. They all had these different farms. So we'd go from one to one. And anyway, my my great grandmother, they had their dairy farm, and it was small, but. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I would sit there and there was like three or four stray cats mm -hmm. or cats that they kept to kill the mice or whatever, but they were outdoors cats. Yeah. And at a certain e time in the evening, they all knew, hey, it's time to milk the cow. And he would hand milk some of them and other ones he put the machines on, but some of them he'd hand milk. And uh -huh. he would take their the tit and he would like squirt it and he'd squirt it in their mouths. And they, you know, yeah. <laughs> like, one point he goes, clear. So I'm like, I walk over there, I go, yeah. And he goes, sit down over there. So I sat down in the midst of in between all these cats. And he goes, open your mouth. And he was like, <laughs> it was like a target practice or something. Man. And I'm like, what's going on? And he just squirted me. And I thought that was just insane. But the cats all knew what was happening. And they would just, you know, open their mouth and close their mouth. It was just the trippiest thing ever. But yeah. Um, I, thought, yeah, you, but I the, thought you lived on a farm. Sorry about that. It would oh, be cool to live on a farm. I mean, there's a certain feeling you get. I don't know, it's weird. Because, like, okay, well, I remember when I was a kid, we used to live out on a farm in Richmond. There were gravel roads, you know, and there was barns. And uh, the, 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 we rented the farmer's house, but he was always working, you know, because he had beans and stuff like that. Oh, so, you rented the farmer's house. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, but when I would be, like, outside, you know, I remember this feeling, this enchanted feeling. You get you get there and you're outside, you're sitting on the porch yeah. or you know, and you're hearing the bugs and yeah. the sun is hot. And you feel like yeah. you're kind of uh, I don't know, it's and like it smells in another smells place. Different. You know? It smells like, are weird, yeah. Like and an old dilapidated, you know, like an old barn with hay in it and stuff. And yes, the sounds. Oh yes, and the smells. Oh my God, yes. The it takes smells, me right yeah, back like, to my childhood. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, I, I was raised. You know, yeah. We went. So it's like another. It's a whole other side of, of living when you, especially if where you're going, the people are old, so they're from old school ways of living anyway. Hmm. So they have, you know, they just, you know, it, it's just a whole. It was like going into like a another reality or something it's like you, you drive up yeah. you're pulling up until we're at grandma and grandpa's house yes, now or whatever yes, you pull yes, up yes. and the smells come oh, in yes, yes. and you're like you go to the front door and all of a sudden the house doesn't seem as big as it did before because right, you're getting yeah. bigger and, and everything's especially smaller if they have a gravel road like a gravel yeah, driveway it's a gravel road that you yeah. go on for like five miles before yes. you get to the right house. yeah <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's, but, um, yeah, that just takes me to another place. I, I love the country. I don't get out in it very often. Oh, I love the country too. I, I, I would have wanted to have been um, a farmer, I think, but I don't. I never would have wanted to live in Minnesota. It just it's too cold there in the winters. Well, I tell you, um, farmers work their asses off, but they live yeah. a long life. They yeah. live into the you know they a lot of many of them live to be a hundred easy. Because oh, yeah, it's, that's, it's that's uh, work that keeps you healthy. Yeah, uh, my, my uh -huh. grandmother and grandfather were the were they're the first people out of their families. They decided they wanted to move to California, mm -hmm. and this is this is like back in 1930. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah. and everybody else stayed. And my grandma and grandpa, first people to die. Mm -hmm. And okay, and their family members, you know, some of them are still alive. I mean, you know, 99, like you know, like, like yes, the oldest brother, yeah. grandpa's older brother, right. you know, he died when he was 99. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, there was but, an old farmer named Henry. He he died. He he made it to 105. The dude was still cutting his firewood. He was still, you know, he was just he was still farming. In well, his hundreds. It's like it's got to be healthy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, but you know they're you terrible. I mean, they don't. You know, even if they're sickly, they still have their muscles still working because yeah. they yeah. they have to do stuff. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, yeah so my I, grandma. Well, she well, what, it is, though, what it is, though, Paulie, it's a routine, but it's a routine with a form of a freedom. Yeah. So, you know, like, you, like, like when you're talking about your grandparents, all right, they had to get up at a certain time to mm, yes, help the cows. Yes, yes. <clears throat> but it wasn't a hassle. It wasn't like um, someone had a whip telling them to do it. It was, oh, we've got to get up to milk the cows. Mm -hmm. Right. Because if we don't milk the cows, then the cows need to be milked. Well, then they'll get mastitis or something like that. Right. So then the whole day, and you just go, oh, well, we get some money, we'll add this or do that. And that's really what the older type system was about. Where I do notice, so in, in America, there are still a lot of relatively small farms and people doing okay with them. Yeah, but not uh, very many. Massive, massive corporate farming's really taken over, you know. And it's like when... Greg said before, but people like Bill Gates are just going out, out buying up massive amounts yep. of land, and that takes yeah. away the individual. That that creep now is everybody's uh, got to work. Now everybody's got to work, but now everybody's got to work for the corporation. No, there aren't the really corporations in, in America, dear. They all the corporations took off and they they put you know they went to other places. That's why China, you know, they. they when they started outsourcing, they knew exactly what they were doing. Oh, absolutely. I don't know why people would be shocked like 30 years, 50 years later, when all of a sudden they're going, how come we don't have any jobs? It's well, like, yeah. they knew exactly what they were doing yeah. when they decided to go off and, and, you know, they take their whole company and move it to another country. Come yes. on, what's, what's that? Yes. How come, I can't, how come I can't buy any life loads? All of a sudden, oh, that's wrong. these big they're corporations all, all don't have city. any public responsibility at all. They even many times get guarded against being sued. Well, yeah, and before, you know, it was the... You used to be proud of working for a company, you know, mm -hmm. like this yes. is what I work for, and, you yes. know, whatever now. Companies had a public responsibility. Mm -hmm. They don't anymore. They just, they really don't uh, uh, like us little people having money. And they their do make responsibility it really now, their, their responsibility now is to Wall Street. That stop, start, finish. Hey, I watched this movie. It was quite... It was sort of funny but quite interesting. I don't know if you've heard of it or not, Holly. What's it? Don't look up. It's mm -hmm. Meryl Street. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, so I don't just watched that. Yeah, I just watched that. Well, what do you think of it? I mean, they, yeah, they just started to <laughs> that, that, that's, corporate, that's corporatization and greed at space, isn't it? Yeah, that weird guy that, that, what was, that really, was really strange, too. Did you and guys see... Uh, uh, it, was a combination, it was a combination of Bezos and... Um, and 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 Elon. Did you guys yeah, see the combination yeah. of the two? <laughs> Did you, you guys know, see Oliver Stone's, Stone's new JFK revisited? Yeah, I watched no. that. I did. Oh my I went god! This freaking just awesome. Oh. Awesome. Uh, the beginning of it just—I was like, in, it made I, me cry. I know. I, I cried at the end. I got a link. I, at, I got a link I here cry. for people. I can put it in. Uh, I can put it in chat, so in case you want to check it out, it's free. It's on Put Locker. And it's really good. It's yes. really good. Oh, yeah. I watched that with you. Yes, we watched that's right, Andy. We watched that yeah, together. Yeah, it's not in the mail. Yeah, it's not in the mail. It is you know, honestly, outstanding. He didn't, out, didn't bring out. He didn't bring out anything really dramatically. New, no, but he didn't. Through. But he's got a four-hour version. It might, be yeah. it might be something new for other people. There's another version. Yeah, There's a four-hour version that hasn't been. Yeah, but it was another version. I've seen a different version yeah. too. Yeah. I don't know if he's come out with the long one yet. He's got two, two, uh, two-hour one and a four-hour one. The four-hour one's going to be yeah, a lot more in depth. It jogs people's memories. Not James Diogenio wrote it, and he knows his shit. He's uh, one of the best JFK 
scholars out there. He's a historian. He's not a researcher. Right. But, but, but what, what, what those things do is they, 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 they sort of get to people, hey, you've got to keep on the toe with this because at the end of the day, yes. don't take our democratic system. That's right. Yeah. Even though we can argue whether it's democratic anymore or not, but don't take our democratic system for granted. Well, yes, it is important that people know the truth. We look. Yes, and that's what we need to be always pursue, whether yes. it's 60 or 100 years later. Absolutely, yes. Yeah. It, it has to be, yes. Australia is like... <laughs> Like Australia used to be, to me, I was like, I was, if I couldn't live in America, I would live in Australia. Cause I thought that was like a, kind of the same, I don't know, the same ideals or so. I don't know yep. the people, I don't know what it was, but Australia was always Shit the other. And it's, it's like Australia is just horrible now, isn't it? I mean, as far as government, well, not horrible. We, uh, we, we are becoming massively Overregulated, and and that, and, and and when you go and you look, you put depth into it, not so much conspiracy. It comes back to the old thing of maintaining a currency value, because that's what everything to these governments is about. Because currency is really for countries a big thing, right? And so we're seeing all sorts of regulations brought in. And yeah, and I just don't, well, I've got an idea what's going on. Ultimately, they're trying to kill what people call the welfare system, which is just a system whereby at a certain age you're able to get a pension for all the work you've done. They're trying, you know, that's, that's a world thing where all those sorts of things, you know, the big end of town don't like seeing people get that. That's you guys the same as what welfare is for us over here, though. I mean, welfare is for, you know, uh, poor people that are just have a yeah. bunch of kids and, you know, they're drug addicts and, you know, they... they what, else do you do with them? What, what else do you do with them, though, Paulie? You know, like, at the end of the day, what's well, the yeah. alternative? I mean, you know, but they, they, you know, if you have children, it's, you know, you, you it's better to be poor with children because they, you know, they care, they obviously they're acting like they care about the children so that's why they you know they, they give the mom or yeah. whoever the money for the kids and you know and, and the more kids the, the person has the more money they're going to get right even if they don't use it for yeah, the well, kids. We, well you're probably the same as us we now have three and four generations that have been in that system and they're quite happy to live on that income oh yeah and that's become in a way that's become a problem right but Man, uh, how do you, how do you really a whole new breed of men without souls i don't know just you know you can't work it's for your living doing it. it's already doing it um yeah you know, yeah you watch idiocracy and you know the they yeah. the poor breed they're the breeders yeah and they're they, like where, they, where do, when do we get our meds <laughs> <laughs> yes right? yeah so you lost all your independence right that's the sad part is is how they've really cowed down to accept this and they don't see that hey i can actually look up a little bit and have a crack well yeah they're and, and they're, yeah. they have no uh you know but the welfare system school. too has a thing whereby you go through it you do the sum i'll get you, you get to a certain here. point if you're, working, if you're working poorly you end up working for nothing for hey NDH, no, not yet. Once people are on it, once people are on it, it's very hard to get off it. I'm going to be... Oh, yes, it is. It is. I'll be moseying over mean, there to ask yeah. you some. Yep. Yeah. Um, but, it, you know, it depends, though. It depends because, like, in Sacramento, the county of Sacramento, okay, yeah. it, it's, 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 they're, the way that they do their welfare system around here is, it's like by counties. And, um, in Sacramento County, um, basically, you know, they just, you go in there and say, I'm poor, and they say, here's your money, oh. and they give you food stamps or whatever, and then that's that. And then they, you know, you, every six months, you have to check up with them to make sure that you're still poor, whatever, and you answer some dumb questions, and that's it. There's nothing you really the have to do, yeah. right? And they could even have yeah. a job and still, you know, yeah. they can't, they're not supposed to, but a lot of them do. Um, and and, uh, and so when we, first moved, when we first moved to Sacramento, 
you know, all around me, there's everybody's, everybody was on welfare. It's like, what? It, I couldn't, it was like, what is wrong with this town? Anyway, we moved to El Dorado uh, Hills, which is, you know, that's El Dorado County, which is, you know, adjacent county. And we, we had a, we, we were renting anyway we had a we were starting a business and we were having problems so my husband's going like alchemy send we need me a link we need some help so i had to go he wanted you know he made me go to el dorado yeah, county out there and and i applied and i got you know got money but their rules were different and their rules were you work for us you work off the money that we give you every month mm. And it's a per monthly thing. So I'm going to give you $250 and you're going to work for this many hours at this pay, 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 hourly wage. And you're going to work here in the welfare office, you know, in the county offices, yeah. doing county work until you pay off this thing. And so you never get ahead in that system anyways. But they make sure they get their money out of you. And they make it so that you don't, it's like, okay, I, you know, and really you have to be there on time and you can't, blah, blah. And if you get, you know, if you, it, it, it just really, it was, it was horrible. And I did that for like four months, I think. Um, and it was, it was just like, this is bullshit. It was the most, but that county, that's how they did it. And, now, um, you're in Sacramento County? Yeah. Yeah. I know a little bit about, I, I used to live there actually in the eighties. <laughs> I live well, I never. No, I, I've only lived in Sacramento for like twenty-five years. I, you know, I grew up in L.A. But you know where Citrus Heights is, right? Yeah. In Roseville, they used to have a big flea market in Roseville. They still do. That's still there, man. I've never in my life seen a flea market get forty thousand people in a weekend, but it does. Oh yeah, they still. Yeah, and they still have it. Yeah, that that was pretty amazing. It was kind of like a, a rock festival. You know, there just wasn't any kind of. yeah. <laughs> But Roseville, you know, Roseville is different. I mean, it's a more upper, you know, I mean, it was a small town. Yeah, yeah. They've, it's really developed now. I mean, very developed. There's, Everybody it's, has a pool in their backyard. And the, I mean, it's yeah. upper middle class, you know, most of it, which is okay. That's fine. But typical California um, house with uh, nature scene, no grass. You know, they don't have grass. Do they? In, where you live? I can't remember. Yes, that. yes, okay, we have grass. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, because of the water situation, which there's a bunch of bull oh, lies, anyway. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, they, you know, they have. You can only water on so many whatever days it is or whatever. Mm -hmm. And um, but yeah, we've always had a lawn or whatever. And as a matter of fact, I mean, it's it's always green. It's, I mean, it gets cold. And it will have frost. If there's a frost, of course, everything dies off, you know. Tahoe but, is beautiful. I, I, I lived in Tahoe for a week. <laughs> you know, skiing. <laughs> but, uh, uh, Tahoe, yeah. yeah Tahoe, 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 the Tahoe, 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 Tahoe Valley, Greg, man, beautiful. They have a lot Greg, of pop there. Greg, time. What? Greg, you would, have been considered, you would have been considered after that visit, wouldn't you? What? You would have been considered a local after you'd been there that long. A week? Yeah. <laughs> Man, it sure is different skiing in California at Squaw Valley or going out here to these little mole hills in Michigan and skiing. It was pretty freaky. You know? Well, yeah. But you've never been in the summertime, right? You've never been. Well, I've you been know. there once in the summer and once in the winter, yeah. I mean, you know, it's a beautiful it's a beautiful place, but. Yes, yes. Expensive. Uh, Expensive. I prefer yeah. Reno. Reno, yeah, that's yeah, Reno. That's the <laughs> Reno nine one one. That that TV show. It's hilarious. Well, yeah. it, it, Reno is that's what Reno is like. It's just a bunch of yeah, you know, <laughs> crack cracked up people that yeah, <laughs> yeah I you know. know they call it something. It's the what is what, what's the nickname the, they the have for it? the littlest biggest yeah t smallest biggest town in the world or something, yeah, something or whatever. Like that, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was stupid. Something weird like that. Yeah, I used to love playing craps. I just love, you know. I really? Always, yes, I. That was the one game that I enjoyed was craps. You know, I would usually play the dark side and roll and play the sevens instead of going with the roller. I see. I never understood. I mean, I've watched people play it, but I've never understood the rules. Well, I never really asked either. But well, you um, you just have like. 
uh, the dice will, you know, they can land a certain way and they have a hard way, which pays more. You could play the field, which inevitably you'll yeah, lose. I mean, you put your money like in a, a little square box or something? That's or if you're with the roller, yeah. And if oh, he, okay. If he oh. hits his number before he rolls a seven, then everybody gets paid. Unless you put it on the don't pass and then you the seven, you get paid. Oh, so that's kind of interesting because that makes that makes the person you can bet on the you can bet on the house or you can bet on right. the person rolling or you can pick your own numbers. You can say I oh. want ten bucks on eight. And every time eight oh, gets rolled, okay. you get paid. But when seven, that's why the game looks it. confusing when you're watching it because there's so many things happening. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Now I, oh I get it. Yeah, it's I mean, a fun game. You know, with I would just piddle around with. I would maybe have. Two or three hundred bucks, and that was how much I took to lose. You know, I'd end up sometimes walking out of there, partied all night long, still have three hundred in my pocket and drunk. You know, but you know, more, well, more often than not, I'd lose. You know. Now I've never played those kind of games because I've never felt comfortable doing it. Because yeah, I, you know, yeah. uh, besides that, you know, uh, fifty. I don't know if they have fifty cent tables for that kind of stuff. Two bucks. <laughs> two bucks. I'm like, you know, it's too bad. I'm like you, Paulie. I'm like you, Bolly. I don't like risking that. Yeah, I like to just see the shit. Yeah. You know. yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, you know, it doesn't matter how much money I someone gives me. Like, um, doesn't matter. And the um, hookers. And the hookers. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, I just what the casino reminds me of is um, eighty-five-year-old ladies and old men, mm -hmm. kind of smelly. Oh, yeah. Weird old ladies, yeah, the, on their you bingo know. bus. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, you know, people sitting Jeez. around and that's my machine. You know, I mm -hmm. you can't sit no one oh. can sit there. Oh, yeah. and kinda it's like whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, and I put my nickel if I could find a nickel machine then I play the nickel. <laughs> and um because I would get more plays, but it didn't matter because I'd always lose. I mean I mean I mean never once to win, never get like a payback. Oh, yeah. I'm serious. Well, the house is it's like okay favorite. it's you know, you at least get paid back one time, just oh, one time. Let me. Yeah, and you know what's the thing is, is these guys from, I think, it was, uh, some university. They were smart, you know, like freaking uh, what do you call them, nerds, right? And they have put together this little team to go in and work the casinos with blackjack, and beat it uh, because they were going to. Uh, yeah. They were That's memorizing amazing. cards. Right, which is against the law. one guy who was the stud, and he'd come in and clear. This guy was taking the casinos down, and uh, they finally busted him. But why is it illegal for him to do that? Card counting isn't cheating. If you're good no, enough to count the cards, you should be allowed to. The casinos, see, it's so fixed that they can't stand someone beating them. You know? And but the whole thing is like everybody everybody knows that it's fixed, but they still go anyway. Sure. Yeah. You know that's the whole, that's how life that's how people are. This guy was they know raping them. They I see always him think, coming. You know. I always think one night I'll get ching ching and become rich. They made a movie about it. Yeah, I, I realize that. Yeah, yeah, I'll get it ching, back. Ching. I'll get it back. Yeah. Well. Well, guys, uh, how long have we been on? Is it almost three hours? I think it is. Yes, we've gone over. It's three hours and 28 minutes. That's okay, though. I'm having a good time. We still got some folks in here. Are you gonna Are you gonna put on anything about JFK for? Uh, well, I do have a little thing. Uh, it's not about JFK so much because I'm still. I'm. I just got done writing it, and I just. I actually recorded a little blurb today. You want to watch it? It's only like twelve minutes. Yeah. All right. I, I do. Yeah, I'm putting it together slowly but surely because I. Yeah, instead of showing other people's stuff, I'm just gonna do my own thing with it. You know, I'm write it and then. Well, I mean, well, there's only there's only so many really good decent things about it that oh, I think I know. I've seen. Yeah, I don't want to go over ground that's already. Been, but here, well, let me give you an idea of what I'm. Um, I'm going to do like things on certain people, like this particular one is about Dean Acheson. Do you know who Dean Acheson was? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to, hold on here, I'm going to, I'm going to have to show it in the movie maker. 
Um, I, I just saw something today about Mac, Macromera, McNamara. Uh, Robert McNamara, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that they were, you know, this guy, he was like, he, when he got older, he was just, he, his health started failing and stuff, and he, mm -hmm. he finally started talking about, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. so I like considered him a bad guy. I thought he was in no, with the he program. Was the only guy in JFK's cabinet who was loyal to him besides yeah, Robert. Yeah, right, but I, I mean, and it, 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 it just messed him up. I mean, it, yes. it caused him to have bad health because he really felt bad, really horrible about it. But, you know, when, from what I saw, like that, that thing that, you know, the, the special uh, thing in um, Foot Locker, mm -hmm. they, they, they didn't uh, make him out to be one of the good people. They made him out, I got the impression that he was in with the bad guys. Who? Macromera. Macromera. Yeah, well, you know, he might have been come late. But I don't know because he was the only guy who was loyal to JFK's uh, pullout order with NSM-263. The military was lying to him and they wanted units to come out and they were just taking people from the units right. because they didn't, they were dragging their feet on purpose, of course. Right. And he wanted, uh, he wanted it to be escalated and, and it, to, to his defense, McNamara did start you know stepping on some toes and saying you it had to be faster but now the real trojan horse in the kennedy uh cabinet was a general named um oh yeah. my god help me out andy general max taylor max taylor was uh, pretty much fired by uh eisenhower because he uh he wanted a yeah. conventional army, and uh, Eisenhower said, no, we're not going to do that. Well, Max Taylor resigned in protest or something like that, or he was forced out by Eisenhower. So Robert Kennedy and him were great friends. He even Robert Kennedy even named one of his sons Max Taylor Kennedy. That's how much. So John, huh? when he came into the White House, he thought he had a good idea. So, well, you know, because they were getting along real good, he said, why don't you come in and be my military advisor and then we can get you signed back up and perhaps you can be the next JCF chairman. He said, okay, he was all about it, but see, Max Taylor was a Trojan horse. They had already approached him and said, you need to get in there. 